How you doing guys, welcome to another video. This is topic 19, higher level redox, volume number five, where we look at electrolysis of aqueous solutions. Let's go. All right, volume five, electrolysis of aqueous solutions. We look at competition at electrodes and we need to be able to predict products of electrolysis. The IB understandings and applications basically focus around those two points and we'll discuss how water can be oxidized and reduced at the anode and cathode. So it's possible to predict the electrode reactions in an electrolytic cell when we know what species are around. And sometimes there's several different species that are present and we need to decide on which one has the greatest tendency to occur. Even the electrodes themselves may react in an electrolytic cell. Now, when an aqueous solution is electrolyzed, we have water present, and water can be oxidized to oxygen at the anode and reduced to hydrogen at the cathode. So we need to take into water at both reactant points. Now, if we have a cathode, we have the negative electrode of an electrolytic cell. And the reaction that occurs at the cathode will be the species that is the strongest oxidant present. That is the one that can undergo reduction, that is the lowest or has the greatest E0 in the electrochemical series. So for instance, if we have manganese, aluminium, zinc, and water present in a solution, the ions, then we would need to work out which one has the greater tendency to occur. Aluminium ions, manganese ions, water, or zinc ions. Now we need to pick the one that is the strongest oxidant. So that means that when we list them according to the electrochemical series, it will be the one that is lowest on the left hand side of the table. So the one that is favored will be the strongest oxidant out of all of the possibilities. So in this case, zinc ions would be the strongest oxidant and they would be favored to undergo reduction at the cathode. So we'll have zinc ions forming zinc solid and coating that cathode. At the anode, which is the positive electrode in an electrolytic cell, that will be the species that is the strongest reductant. That is the species that can undergo oxidation that is highest or the lowest E0 value in the electrochemical series. So for instance, if we have chloride ions, fluoride ions and water present, if we arrange those up according to the electrochemical series, then water will be the strongest reductant. So water would be favored to undergo a reaction at the anode because it is the strongest reductant. So that means water will turn into oxygen, oxygen gas and, and hydrogen ions. So that's where we can form our oxygen gas at the anode. It is the strongest reductant and it will be favored to undergo a reaction. Now we can use this little back the front Z to try and work out what the reaction will be. Our strongest reductant will be down the bottom on the right hand side, our strongest oxidant up the top on the left hand side. The oxidant will undergo reduction, the reductant will undergo oxidation, and we're looking for the two species that are pretty much closest together. In a voltaic cell, we're looking for them to be the furthest apart, the greatest E0 difference, but in an electrolysis reaction, it's the two that are closest on the series. So here's an example. Electrolysis of dilute one molar sodium chloride NAC, NACL aqueous using inert electrodes. Inert electrodes meaning that the electrodes won't react. So I've got my electrolytic cell set up. I'm gonna put in some of the things that we've been given information about. We've been given information about NaCl aqueous. So that means we have sodium ions, chloride ions, and also have water. Now to practice doing this, it's a good idea to list all of the things or the species that we have in this cell. But we have sodium ions, we have chloride ions, and we have water. Now I'm going to write water twice because water could react at the anode and the cathode. So I'm gonna write water twice every time we electrolyze an aqueous solution. Then it's a good idea to try and work out which species will react at the anode and the cathode. Remembering that the anode is positive in an electrolytic cell, so that will attract the negatively charged ions. So it will attract the chloride ions and a water the cathode being negatively charged will attract the sodium ions and water as well. 
So we've got all of our species present and now we can see where they're going to react. The next thing we need to do is work out which one of those species is the strongest reductant and which one is the strongest oxidant. So it's a good idea to just write down the half equations from the electrochemical series and then identify the strongest reductant and the strongest oxidant. If I was doing this in exam, I would simply look at the table. I might not write them down, but I can at least see the two reactions and then identify the strongest reductant and the strongest oxidant. So copying out the half equations from all of our possibilities, we get the table which will allow us to make that determination. So here we have sodium ions forming sodium solid, and then we have water turning into hydrogen gas. So here we can see that we have water both at the anode and the cathode, so we could form hydrogen gas and oxygen gas. Now, we need to identify the strongest reductant and the strongest oxidant. So the strongest reductant will be the one highest on the electrochemical series and the strongest oxidant will be the one lowest on the electrochemical series. So the strongest reductant is water and the strongest oxidant is water. So that means that water will be reacting both at the cathode and the anode. So our two half equations are going to be our half equations for water. At the anode, we'll have water turning into oxygen gas, and at the cathode, we'll have water turning into hydrogen gas. So the water will be reacting at both of the electrodes, simply because it is the strongest oxidant and the strongest reductant that we had in this cell. So writing out the two half equations, we can then combine them to write the overall equation by balancing for electrons and then keeping things on the left of the arrow on the left, keeping things on the right of the arrow on the right. And after we do some cancelling, we see that the overall equation is H2O liquid goes to H2 gas plus a half O2 gas. Okay, another example. Electrolysis of a dil dilute one molar copper sulfate solution using copper electrodes. Again, we need to go through and identify all of the species present and we need to include the electrodes in this case because they could react as well. So we have copper sulfate aqueous and we'll have water in our solution as well, H2O liquid. So what are all the species that could react in this cell? Well, we have copper two plus ions, we have sulfate ions, we have our electrodes this case, in this, this case and our water. So I'll write my water twice because I can have the anode and the cathode. And I've also got copper electrodes, so I'll write those twice as well. I can go through and then identify that there'll be one water and one copper at both the anode and the cathode. Remember that the negative electrode is the cathode and the positive electrode is the anode. The sulfate ions are very unreactive and they actually won't do anything in this electrochemical electrolytic cell, so I'll simply just cross that out. So what are the things that could react at the anode, the positive electrode? Well, we have water and we have a, our copper solid electrode. At the cathode, we have water, copper two plus ions, and then the copper electrode. Now the copper electrode, well, Reduction occurs at the cathode and copper solid can't be reduced anymore. So it simply cannot react at the cathode. So I can cross that one out straight away. Now I need to go through and try and identify the strongest reductant and the strongest oxidant in the series. So I can write my two half equations or simply just list my two species in order of the electrochemical series. So we see that copper solid is above water on the electrochemical series. And at the cathode, we have our copper two plus and our water. Now our copper two plus is lower than water on the series. So that means that it is the strongest oxidant. Copper solid will be the strongest reductant. So that means that our reaction will actually take place between our electrode at the anode and our copper ions at the cathode. So copper solid is the strongest reductant, copper ions are the strongest oxidant, so the reaction is actually going to be copper just plating on to the copper electrode. So at the anode we would have copper solid turning into copper two plus ions, and at the 
cathode will have copper 2 plus turning into copper solid. Now, our overall equation would actually just balance each other out, but essentially what we're doing here is we're taking copper from the anode and plating pure copper onto the cathode. So if you have an impure sample of copper, you can actually undergo some electrolysis to remove all of the impurities and then coat it onto a, a nice copper electrode. What we would see is that copper electrode would start to be eaten away and then pure copper would be plating onto the cathode. And this is an application that they do quite often to just remove any impurities from a sample and then to extract the metal from the sample. Again, if this was a data analysis, the anode would lose some mass and the cathode would gain some mass. And if there were any impurities, they would fall to the bottom of the beaker. Okay, so that is electrolysis at standard conditions. What if we're working at non-standard conditions? So in some cases, when there's very little difference between the E0 values, it's possible for the, reactant, the reaction to favor a different species. And the one that they'll use here is sodium chloride. Generally, when we have one molar solutions of sodium chloride, we yield oxygen gas and hydrogen gas at the electrodes. But if we increase the concentration of NaCl to approximately 6 molar, then what we can do is favor the oxidation of chlorine instead of the oxidation of water. Now, if we have a look at the table, under standard conditions, water is a stronger reductant than chloride ions. But at 6 molar, what happens is they flip over and Cl- actually has is a better reductant at those concentrations. So its E0 value actually ends up being less than the E0 value of water. So we can actually favor the production of chlorine gas at very high concentrations of NaCl. So just be careful of that. If they mention that something's at non-standard conditions and it's a high concentration, they're probably, you need to probably think that the electrodes are going to switch around. Not the electrodes are going to switch around, the reactions at that electrode are going to switch around. One of the notes in the guidance was the term cells in series could be understood, needs to be understood. So I thought they might include a question like this, where we have three electrolytic cells set up in a row, and we need to write the equation at the anode or the cathode for each of those cells. Now, when you've got something set up like this in series, what happens is we just, the electrodes become negative, positive, negative, positive, negative, positive, and the electricity will flow through each of the cells and then be returned to the battery. So we essentially have like three electrolytic cells set up. So one, two, and three, and we might be asked to write the reactions at each of those electrodes. The same process occurs as we've discussed in this video, that you know, we look for the strongest reductant and the strongest oxidant, and those will be the ones favored at the electrode. We're working with aqueous solutions, so we need to consider water as well. What I'd like you to do is have a go at this question, pop your answers in the, in the comments below, and then I'll post up a video saying what the correct answer was. See if you can do it, have a go, but that's the type of thing for cells in series. Okay, volume five, some top tips. Always refer to in questions as the strongest oxidant and strongest reductant. Make sure that if they ask you to identify, you must include the species and the state, and make sure you know how to use that electrochemical series. Thanks for watching, guys. Don't forget, drop a like on the video, subscribe for more, and I'll see you next time.